In this video series, we are looking at the grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology Paper 1 from November 2021. This is the final matric exam paper. And we're going to start off with question 1, the Microsoft Word or Word Processing question. So here we are at question 1 and the scenario is about pollution. And we're going to look at the first document, which is One Health, which I've already opened. And remember, you must always insert your examination number in the head and the footer. So don't forget to do that as well. So let's go to 1.1. It says change the page size of the document to A4. So we're going to go to our document. Now that would be something to do with the layout. So let's go look at the layout. And we can look over here at the size. There we go. And we move it down to A4, and there we go. So there we go. That's how you change the size. You could have also done it this way. Go into File, and then to Print, and then would have selected it over there. That's another option available to you. So let's look at question 1.2. Change the line spacing of the paragraph with the starting with the following is, and any width by air pollution, to be the same as the line spacing of the first paragraph. So there, there's the paragraph that we're looking at, and we want it to look like the first paragraph. So um, there are lots of ways we can do We can go select it, and we could have select the formatting of it, or we can just go look at what is the actual line space of this paragraph. And if we look there, you can see it's multiple at 1.15. So we could also just do that as well. So if we just apply that multiple and 1.15 to this one, come here and we say, okay, we make it multiple and we're going to make it 1.15. So you can do that as well if you don't want to use the format painter. 1.3, replace all the occurrences of the text ozone to appear in aerial, narrow, bold, and italic. You don't know how many times the, the text ozone appears in the document. So the best place to do this is to go to the replace. So we're going to click on replace and I'm looking for the word ozone. Okay, so we want ozone, but we want to replace it with the word ozone. So we don't want to change the actual text, but we want to change the formatting of the text. So I'll make sure that my cursor is on the replace part, so that it'll be formatting for this part, and we're going to change it. So we want more options here. We want to change the format of it. Font must be Arial Narrow. So we're going to look for Arial narrow so we want aerial narrow and we want it to be bold and italic those are what we want so you notice how it specifies the format over here because the cursor was here if we had left the cursor there it would have done the formatting over there so it would have looked for the word ozone that was font aerial bold italic which wouldn't exist so that's what we are looking for and if you remember from the question it said exact text so we want it to be exactly like that so to make sure that we get exactly like and we want to match the case because i don't want it to uh, be exactly like that we see it's matching case on the on the top on here and we wanted to find whole words only please so those that's our specifications will be found exactly that particular text so let's go replace all and there were five replacements done and we click okay and we can go and close and go look at where we can see all these ozones that are going to be obviously bold and narrow there we go we can see all of them there okay so there we go that's that question done now 1.4 Insert a 9 centimeter high by 8 centimeter wide text box and move the text that begins with nitrogen dioxide and ends with hot in the text. And it must be like that as it's shown in the diagram. And they t actually tell me it must be relative to the word air. So there's the word air. So that's where the box is going to appear. And the text at the bottom is going to be relative to the word ground. Okay, so let's go insert a text box first. 8 by 9, 8 high, 9 wide. So let's go do that. Where does so it's over this area? That's where we're going to. So I'm going to insert a text box. So let's go insert. And we come here to text box. So we're going to insert a text box. I'm going to click on draw. And I'm going to draw it here somewhere. So just for interest, I just draw it here. And we want the height 9 high. They said 9 high and 8 wide. So let's make it 8 wide. So that's where I'm specifying the dimensions. And they want the text. It's double check. They want the text nitrogen dioxide up until heart disease to be inside of it. So let's, you see, they've highlighted nicely for us. There we go. All this text. I'm going to select all of that text and I'm going to drag it into there. See if it works. If I drag it, there we go. And it's moved in. That's very nice. But the problem is the text is not moving around it. So I ideally want this text to move around it. So this text box, we need to change its word wrap property. We want it not to be in front of the text, but we want it to be tight so that the text goes around it. 
And now we want to move it to the word air. There's the word air. So let's drag it up to air. And we need the bottom to be aligned with ground. So let's just play around with this. If I move it back slightly, do we get ground to come all the way across? Move it in a little. There we go. So there we go. So we got air at the top and we got ground at the bottom. So we just had to jimmy it a little bit to get to the where we want it to be. So there we got it within the correct position. Question 1.5. Find the text that begins with the heading, does it make a difference where I live, and ends with fuels and vehicles. And we must change this into two columns. And the width of the first column is 8 centimeters, and the space between the columns is 1 centimeter. So there are three things, two columns, first column 8 centimeters, and space between is 1 centimeter. So let's find this does it make a difference text. So let's go to the doc. Does it make a difference? Oh, there we go. There's the text until vehicles. There we go. So they've highlighted in orange. So we want to select the text first so we select it first and we come here to layout and there's our columns option so I'm going to select two columns you can do that there or we go to more columns it'll give us the options that we want so we want two columns but we want the width of the first column to be eight centimeters so we can make it eight so allow me to make it eight so let's make it a straightforward eight and the spacing now do you see it's not allowing me to change it because it's still it wants an equal column width so we must deselect that actually first then it allows us to actually do some changes there and we want the spacing between to be one centimeter so if we do that it'll adjust the second column accordingly so our first column is eight centimeters the spacing between is one and make sure you unclick that equal column so that it allows you to do that I click OK boom there we go so there's our columns okay find the text that begins with heading on the road and ends with keeping the windows closed and we must apply a multi-level list numbering as shown in the text below so there's our details so that's what we must apply the multi-level numbering now take note they've given us the ruler at the top there that's very important because it's telling us where we must align and where we must indent it to so they've given us a lot of information here that we need to apply as well because it's seven marks it requires a lot of settings that need to be set so let's go first to find the text so on the road let's scroll down there's on the road so yeah we go on the road up until there that must be changed to a multi-level numbering system so we're going to select that text we're going to come here to home and we want a multi-level numbering system and i'm going to select a new multi-level list and so we're going to define the first level so let's just double check the first level is just the number by itself but you'll notice it is at position zero so that's the first thing so let's have a look so it's just the number by itself so i'll just delete the bracket and we want it to be aligned at zero but if you look at the text indent the text indents to number one so that's one centimeter so let's go here and we want the index to be set to one centimeter please thank you and that's the first level done now we want to do the second level so if i click on the second level they want me to have an a followed an a b c d followed by a bracket and in this case we've already got one we've already got an a if it wasn't a then we could delete all of this and then just select one of the options over here which would have been that one and remember they wanted a bracket after it so we're going to put a bracket after it so there we go that's great and then where does it start it starts at one so it starts at one so what does that mean well that's the text alignment it's aligned at one so we're going to make it aligned at one but where does its indentation happen so the indentation for this one happens at two so we're going to come over here and make the text indent for this one will be at two please so that should set everything for those for all that text so we click ok and it's all been set now we must go and apply our tabs so the first one that row text must be tabbed and it basically all the bold words will be level one and everything underneath it will be level two so let's just see if we can apply the same thing so we just click over here on this this text i'm going to click on tab and does it look very similar does the alignment look great yes the alignment looks right underneath it and right over there if we look it's very similar it works out perfectly so these as well we can tab them i think each one of these is a tab i think it goes until d you can double check that d and then the next one's d and the next one's c so let's go apply it so this would be tab i'm just pressing my tab key to move it to where it move those lines to the second level this is one two 
three. So there we go. And so it's nicely aligned. And we used that ruler to really guide us about where those indentations and line indents should be. Okay, so 1.7, change the UK Health Department source to a website source with URL, that URL. So let's go find where is the source. Okay, I don't see anything, but we can, let's go to references and we're going to go manage our sources. And there should be a UK air quality. I think it's that one. So let's go edit it. So this, I think it's the UK Health Department, UK Health Source to a website, and that must be the URL. So at the moment, it's a book. So we're going to change it to a website. And the URL is going to be http colon slash slash. And what did they want it to be? If you remember correctly, it is www.airquality.co.uk. www.airquality co.uk do we spell it correct okay double check our spelling looks all good and that's how we've changed that particular source so it's all done so i can close that thank you that one's done easy 1.8 we must add an automatic bibliography below the heading bibliography at the end mm. that seems quite straightforward so let's go to our document there's the bibliography heading so underneath it i'm just going to go to references and there's our bibliography they didn't specify which one did we want they just said insert an automatic one so we can use one of the bibliographies that are here and there's these custom ones or you can go insert a particular one if you want and there it is it's just added a random one in for us and there we go that part is done let's move on to 1.9 insert a picture one clean as the watermark to the document scale the watermark image to 150 percent so the watermark is something to do with let's look at design ah design there's the watermark so we're going to select watermark and we want a custom watermark and we're going to go and obviously we want a picture one so let's go select that picture so i'm going to click on select picture there we go there's the picture that we want so i'm going to select on that picture one clean that's the image that they wanted and they wanted it to be scaled to 150 percent let's select that did they say anything else it's just that there we go so we can just do those two options click ok and there should be a watermark at the back there you can sort of see the little watermark at the back there and then the final question inspect the document for issues and remove all the hidden text from the document so they want us to inspect it so let's come here to file we'll come here to file we'll come here to info and there's a check for issues so we can select check for issues so we can inspect the document there so let's inspect it let's see what it says before we make sure that you say yes we've saved changes thank you and it shows us all the details over there so we want to look for hidden text hidden text to check the document click inspect we want to check for hidden text so let's just only inspect the hidden text so deselect all of that we want to inspect for hidden text so inspect it's running and and we can remove all of the hidden text by clicking on that button and it will remove all of it another way that you could do it as well if you're not going to inspect the document so another little trick is you can come here to file and you can come here to options and when you look on display you can say i want hidden text to be visible and when you click on that you'll see all the text that's got little dots underneath it will be highlighted so if, oh you can see there there's our text that is hidden you can see all those little dots underneath that's hidden if there's a, a very long document and you want to go through it you can also use the find replace so if we come here to find replace we can say we clear all we want to clear all this from our previous one so where's the formatting so we want to click on it and go just clear it i want to get rid of all of these options and this one I also want to clear and say no formatting. I simply want to go look for hidden text. I'm selecting there. I'm going to format font and I'm going to say I want hidden text, please. So I go click OK and find next and it will show you where all the hidden text is. So there, if I go find next, you can find all the hidden text. So at the moment, it's just those three lines. So we can just go and delete those three lines if you want. So that's how you can do it by using inspection or by using that other method where you can just delete those three lines. And there we have removed all the hidden text. And that is question one. We'll now move on to question two in our next video. Make sure that you save and good luck. Links to data files and other videos can be found in the video description. For help with theory, go to our other channel called Mr. Long Computer Terms. Click that subscribe button or follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.